Hello, hello. I just want to talk about hunting in this video. Um, this is what happened. We used to live in LA and there was no hunting anywhere because we lived in Marina del Rey and near the ocean and it was all developed land and it was really, really congested. Everything was crowded. The air was terrible. So we moved to Oregon. And guess what happens? There's always a negative side to the coin, right? Wherever you go. So when we came to Oregon, everything was clean. The air is clean, the streets are clean, everything is wonderful. Nobody to talk to for me though about Friedrich Nietzsche. Um, I don't think there's anybody uh, from all the way from Coos Bay to Petaluma who I could talk to about Friedrich Nietzsche. But that's the minor issue. The major issue is we're, we're coming here, we're moving here to get away from the noise, from the violence, from the... the there's sometimes shooting, ga gang-related shooting in LA, not where we lived, but you know, we wanted, wanted to get away from all of this, from the violence. We come here, we think, oh, everything's peaceful, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, during the summer months in particular, I hear shootings almost every day. I also hear tied up dogs that are crying for help. Somebody take me off this, this chain or this rope. You know, I want to explore the environment. I want to meet other living beings to socialize with. I don't want to be alone. So I hear these dogs crying out there and the and it is and the whole it is so terrible to hear gun shootings like uh it's it sounds like a war zone actually somebody who shoots animals is a murderer a capital murderer a capital criminal it's a violent criminal. And uh, if it's not regarded like that by the law around the globe, that doesn't mean these people are not murderers. These people are murderers because they're murdering life and they're murdering very highly sentient life, just like humans. That's, there's no difference, okay? It is the same as murdering humans. It's the same as if somebody goes out there and aims at little girls and little boys and teenagers and adults and old ladies. It's the same thing as murdering people. So I have a story about this. Like older men who don't think much of themselves who are very, like really obese, they all say, me, I'm a carnivore, <laughs> and that all of a sudden in his mind elevates him to a more badass level or something. No, it is not badass, it's pathetic. I am chubby, but I'm not a meat eater, thank goodness. <coughs> So I am into holistic health. I take very good care of my hygiene, inner hygiene, outer hygiene, and brain hygiene. And I wish everybody would do it because we could ha make a paradise happen on earth if everybody did this. And if people stop taking offense, you know, it's like uh, trying to be badass it already starts with this idea of wanting to feel better about oneself. But it's a completely faulty way of doing it, you know. It's like if, if anybody wants to feel better about themselves, they need to stop eating meat. That's the first step they need to do, okay. And they need to stop hunting because hunting is not cool. It is ridiculously low class. Okay, it's insane, it's hideous, and it is moronic. That's what that is. And it is murder. 
So I wanted to tell the story about Kaspar Hauser. I don't know if any of you know about this amazing story, Kaspar Hauser case. Kaspar Hauser was, he was living around 1820, um, I think he was born around maybe 1810, something like this. And he was a the heir of a throne, the the throne of the of a dynasty. He was he was going to take over the chair, the the throne. And so because of this, I forgot now the exact name of that dynasty, but they wanted to get rid of him, and the people wanted to get rid of him they hired a hitman the hitman who was hired to kill the baby he took the baby and he left with the baby but then he and he he needed the money because they were poor but he did not have the the callousness of murdering that child so he felt sorry for the baby and he let his wife nurture the baby and um, I think for like a couple of years maybe two or three years and it is the theory goes that they were working for that royal court they were living in that castle somewhere as lower employees and the person who wanted the child out of the way did not realize that the lady was actually taking care of that child that she disguised the child obviously and uh, she said that's her own and so because he later remembered this particular castle growing up and he remembered certain details of it this is what happened they 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 probably weren't able to take care of that many children they already probably had like 10 children and they could not take care of another child or something or they were afraid that it would be discovered that it is that royal child and then he would have to pay with his own life that's how things were back then and um so I think he handed the child to someone else to hide the child somewhere in another castle or in a yeah in a, in a dungeon or something. So which w which is terrible by itself. He should have not been afraid. He should have just kept the child and taken good care of the child and just lied and said that is that is my own child. But he was probably afraid. I mean, there's theories about it, but plausible th theories. So then the, the next person who took over the child, by that time the child was like two or three years old and had already, I think, yeah, or maybe just one year old because he hadn't really started to speak much, only just a few words. And then um, they brought that baby to another castle near the Rhine in Germany and they put him into a dungeon there and they took care of him and they gave him bread and water and a little wooden horse to play with and there was this child sitting there in total darkness there was just one little window on the top but he could not reach up there to look out and so uh, there was very little sunlight coming into that dungeon room and he was just sitting there and he was rocking that wooden horse back and forth. It's absolute extreme cruelty what these people were capable of doing. And um, so this child was completely deprived of any kind of sensual input, sensual stimuli from the outside environment, uh, light, colors, sounds, words, all of this he did not experience. And I think the few words that he had already learned, he, he must have forgotten. Um, so these neuronal connections, they probably got um, 
somehow they diffused again and so he kind of like completely grew up without any words except for horse which they called Ross at that time and um, and Kaspar Hauser which was the name that was given to him by the person who was hiding him so Kaspar Hauser grew up like this until he was like 16 and he did not speak he just could say Ross and um, oh yeah and there's one sentence that that they taught him when they took him out of the dungeon when he was 16 they taught him real quickly to say um, I want to become like my father who was a professional horseback rider and um, they had those royal court horse riders and uh, they were working for the royal families and so with that statement they wanted to distract the public from who he really was that he was the heir to that throne so again they 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 just couldn't murder him they instead they they brought him to Nuremberg which is um, southern Germany and they put him there on the marketplace and um, just barely taught him to walk he could because he'd never walked he was kind of like staggering and people thought he was drunk or he was retarded so he was standing there on that marketplace and he had a little paper in his hand which had some kind of like identification on it that which were false you know that he was the son of that um, royal court horseback rider so then somebody took him in his house a teacher the teacher of that town and a young teacher he had already had kids but he felt sorry for that Kaspar Hauser and he trained him how to speak and write and even compose music and play the piano all of these things and Kaspar learned very very fast and he was very very amazed about this and so he had because of the sensual deprivation he um, was very sensitive to light and um, bright colors and stuff like that and he also did not want to eat meat and that's why I'm bringing this story up because he was only given bread and water that's all he ate his whole life growing up in the dungeon and so he refused to eat meat he said that tastes horrible he said that tastes scary frightened and I remember I, I did a test with my horse in the past I I got a piece of salami and I held it under the nose of my horse and my horse was disgusted with that smell and he blew up his you know the they have these big nostrils and they, they they're round and they can bloat up kind of like a frog you know these nostrils and these nostrils went like like this you know and he was rolling his eyes in fear and you could see the white on the side and and these nostrils would go up like this and and he would go backwards and was shaking his head like this oh no this is scary it is scary that smell and that don't come to me with this piece of meat in your hand yeah and that's because horses are complete vegan animals and uh, anyone who gives a horse meat that's absolutely cruel they can't even digest that properly so that would make him very sick if that was mixed into a pellet mix or something which they do that's what they do in the in the factory farming industry they mix all kinds of meat and roadkill and stuff like this into pellets which caused a real dangerous protein to develop in the animal called prion protein which caused people to get Alzheimer's disease disease is also called bovine spongiform encephalitis it is um, 
a brain inflammation caused by this protein that docks onto neurons and destroys them. And this process is also happening in people and it's, it's been happening in dogs, factory farm animal, animals that are infected with that protein that have, co that have originally developed that protein because they have been fed meat, which they should never have done to vegan animals. So this um, protein then infected all kinds of, of pets. And we, our former dogs, Ludwig and Samantha, they got this illness in 2003, infected from the dog food they were eating, Nutra Nuggets was the name. And so I make sure not to ever buy this dog food brand anymore and I make sure to only buy um, like chicken or salmon dog food. This is a whole lot better. Or also uh, vegetarian, we did that also for a while and I recommend the dog food by Ellen DeGeneres which is called Halo, the brand, that's her brand, Halo dog food do for dogs and cats too. They make dog food for they make pet food for dogs and cats and that is very excellent and very pure. And um, so Kaspar Hauser was like the horse and he, you have to keep in mind that was happening in Germany. Kaspar Hauser was coming from evolutionarily, if anybody wants to use that excuse, was coming from from a bloodline of complete meat-eating families, you know. They were all chubby, varicose, veined uh, meat-eaters for generations after generations, and particularly this royal family that um, constantly got to eat meat they had because they were rich and they were catered to. and. Um, so back then it was that was the status symbol to be fat and a meat eater that was the status symbol of being rich today is exactly reversed he completely despised it he shied away from it he was afraid of the meat it tasted like murder you know it tasted like corpse and um so what that tells me is if somebody is completely growing up without ever even smelling meat or tasting it, this is the result. The result is hypersensitivity against it. And so I think that is the natural state of a human. The case of Kaspar Hauser proves that we do not need to eat meat to be healthy and... And, and there was another thing that was very interesting when he, um, before he started to eat meat in that, because eventually after a couple of years they kept on pushing it on him, he finally ate it. But all these years without the meat, he got along very well with all the animals in that village. The dogs greeted him, dogs, strange, stranger dogs came up to him, felt safe with him, greeted him, and they all wanted to be with him. And then as soon as he started to eat meat, the same dogs would not even recognize him anymore. They, he would smell differently, he would um, be perceived differently, and more like a predatory animal. So I find that very interesting, all of this, you know. So, and obviously he, his body was not missing meat at all. He was just eating bread. But, but at that time, the bread was wholesome. It, ha it had a f full nutrition in it. The bread we buy today is, is not nutritious anymore for many different reasons. Um, first of all, most bread that we buy, like at Safeway, for example, it's, you might just as well eat cardboard. I just buy it for taste, that's all. I mean, they have no alternative, really. You know, then they have the, the only whole wheat breads that they have that, that taste also very horrible and it's also 
not nutritious very much because they load it up with white sugar and other stuff that's not good for you and um, the grain itself is not nutritious anymore like it used to be 200 years ago because um, because of soil depletion earth soil depletion you know we we are taking the the civilizations or particularly through modern agriculture they're removing the nutrients out of our soil out of the the potting soil and the growing soil and the agricultural soil so what happens is um, that the plants they're growing are basically empty of nutritious values so this is this is all very sad but back to the main subject of the video obviously people do not need meat and they're doing much better without it without growing up with that and um, they're healthier and they're leaner and trimmer and they think better and but again today we have to use an, an, uh, a large variety uh, a wide panel of different plants in order to feed our brains. For example, raw bean sprouts is absolutely critical to eat for the brain. So for anybody who wants to go raw or vegan or even vegetarian, a lot of bean sprouts in make salads with is very 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 nutritious it's, it's extremely important for the brain for the growing brain and also for main for maintaining a healthy brain later on as well we need to get away from eating meat and in particular pigs and cows and mammals get away from that completely you know do the make the first transition and just go to turkey and chicken and make sure you get it from sustainable farms where they where they are not treated cruelly. So it's very important because there's undercover footage out there of people even raping the turkeys. It is unbelievable. And they suffer and they scream. It's horrible. They have feelings too. They're sentient beings. They have a nervous system where they they feel, you know, or they wouldn't even survive I mean it's like birds they also work on the same principle avoiding pain and gaining pleasure same as all animals you know even worms uh, work on that principle but you know we have a sliding scale you know when it comes to invertebrates there it is not as complex obviously but in birds it is very complex just as it is in mammals so and octopus and um, sharks for example are very highly evolved fish they have a very complex nervous system and then people cut the fins off and let the sharks drown this is extreme cruelty and it, it is it's killing the ecosystem and the ocean and it will eventually affect all life on, on land. People don't look at the big picture of it. You know. Same with the logging of the Amazon rainforest or any kind of forest. You know. We need to quit the logging, we need to quit the pesticides, we need to quit the hunting. We need to come to our senses and do what is good for all of us, for every one of us, for you, whoever you are who you are, Ted Nugent, you know. It is better for Ted Nugent to come to his senses, you know. He eventually he will face it. He will face a form of karma in one way or another. It will catch up, you know. It is not in terms of penalty, but in terms of causality, cause and effect, you know. People who eat meat, they die gruesome death from illness. You know, it's as simple as that. Get away from it. You know, why do it? It's not necessary. So my last word is about the Buddha. And the Buddha is the greatest philosopher in history who has ever existed and ever will. And he said, stay away from hunting, stay away from murdering 
any kind of living being, stay away from causing any living being suffering, stay away from any kind of slavery, any kind of exploitation, okay? And stay away from any kind of toxins that is not good for us. This is what the Buddha said, and this is very important that people start to read Buddhist books because they will help all of us. Take care.